Okay, Shelby, this is your final finals review. I'm going to start reviewing your final with you. Okay, it's about 21, 22 problems. Mike makes $12 per hour and works 45 hours a week. That's more than 40. 5% is deducted for federal tax, 7% is deducted for Social Security tax, and $75 is taken out each month for insurance. Find Mike's net pay. So if he works more than 40 hours, he works regular time, and he works overtime. Okay, now, and we add those. So his regular pay is $12, okay? What is his overtime pay? What I need to do is take $12, and this number's not in the problem, but every time you work overtime, you get paid time and a half, so it's 1.5. 12 times 1.5, $18. Okay. Now, I have to multiply these by how many hours Mike works. Hours, hours. He works 40 hours is for regular. Now, to find Mike's overtime, we take 45 minus 40, the rest of it, and that's 5, okay? 45, 45 minus 40. Okay, so I add, multiply 12 times 40, and that's 480. Then I multiply 18 times 5, that's 90. Now I add these two amounts together. So 480 plus 90 is 570. Now, he does not get to keep all of this. Okay, Deducted means subtract. You got 5%. And then you got 7%. And then you got $75. So you can write down the $75. But what about these? Okay. Well, I need to find what 5% of 570 is. And I have to figure out what 7% of 570 is. Now you're going to want to kind of be quick here with your calculators. You're going to take the 5 divided by 100, 0 0.05, and then of means times 570. So again, I'll repeat that. Divide Always divide your percent by 100, and then times it by 570. $28.50. Okay, and then I divide the 7 by 100, 0 0.07, and then I times it by 570. That's $39.90. Again, you're going to divide that by 100 and then times. Okay, now minus them, and that's your net pay. That's how much you get to keep. Four hundred twenty-six dollars and sixty cents, and that's a net pay. Okay. Number two, I go to the hospital. My bill's eight hundred dollars. My insurance policy calls on me to pay a forty-dollar deductible, along with twenty percent of the amount over the deductible. How much do I have to pay? So my bill is $800, but I have to pay the $40 plus another money amount, okay? Now, I have to pay 20%, okay, of something, okay? Over the deductible means we need to subtract, take my bill, $800, and subtract the $40 deductible. And that's seven hundred and sixty dollars. Write that down so you know where it came from. Okay, 
So again, I divide the percent by 100, hit equals, and then multiply, times it by 760. That's $152. So I add those, and that's my answer. So 40 plus 152 is $192. Okay, so again, you pay 40 and 20% of 800 minus 40, and then again, you divide that by 100. Number three, a 35-year-old gets a 20-year term life insurance policy. If he passes away during that period, his family receives $60,000. Premium rate is $6.50 per $1,000 of face value each year. How much will he pay each year? So that per means I set the ratio. That means $6.50 per $1,000. Okay. Now, if he dies in the next 20 years, his family gets $60,000. So that's what he's paying for. That's his face value. So I cross multiply and divide. Okay. Divided by a thousand, three hundred and ninety dollars. That's how much he that's your answer. How much does he pay each year? Three hundred and ninety dollars. Okay, number four. As a salesman, I get paid on commission. My commission rate is 20% of my sales. If my sales were $40,000 for the month, how much do I get to keep? This is easy. You just get to keep 20% of your $40,000. Okay? So again, i got to figure out what that is. So 20 divided by 100 because it's a percent. Of means times 40,000. So I get to keep $8,000. Now this is a little more complicated on the next one. As a salesman, I get paid on graduate commission. I get paid 5% of my first $7,000 sales, 8% on the next $8,000. Remember that next means something. And 12% on the amount over $15,000. My sales are $20,000. How much do I get to keep? Now I have 3%. So I have to find 5% of. I got to find 8% of. And I got to find 12% of. Now here's how we figure out what we find the percent of. First 7,000. First means it's from $0 to $7,000. Then I drop my 7,000. And the next 8,000, that doesn't mean you write 8,000. That means you plus. Next means plus 8,000. So I take 7,000 plus 8,000, and that's 15,000. And then 15,000, and the word over means we don't know where it stops until I get to my sales. It's 20,000, okay? Now, to find out what I'm taking the percent of, I minus these. So I take 7,000 minus 0, 7,000. I take 15,000 minus 7,000. 8,000, and then I take 20,000 minus 15,000, that's 5,000. Now figure out those percents. Remember, when these should add up to your sales, okay? So I divide the 5 by 100, and then times it by 7,000, okay? So that's 350. Same thing, 8 divided by 100 times 8,000 is 
and then 12 divided by 100 times 5,000 is 600. And now I add these amounts together, okay? So when I get more than 1%, okay, I need to line up these brackets here, okay? So 350 plus 640 plus 600 is $1,590. Okay, number six. An item originally priced at $60 is 20% off the original price. Find the sale price of the item. So, I want to find out how much this costs with 20% off. So, 60 minus... To find out how much we minus, we need to find 20% of $60. So again, I take the percentage divided by 100 and then times 60. So I get $12 off. So 60 minus 12 is 48, $48. Okay, and our item was originally priced at 150 is marked up 20%. Find the new price of the markup. So up means it cost 150, but now I add the money to it. And I simply find 20% of $150. So I divide the 20 by 100 and then times 150, 30. 150 plus 30 is 180. Okay, the purchase price of an item is $20.23. There's a 7% sales tax added. How much does the item cost? Now, again, this is added. Tax is always added on to the price. And I have to find 7% of $20.23. times 20.23, $1.42. I'm taking 42 because the third digit after the 41 is a 6. Now it's higher than 5, so it goes to $1.42. 20.23, $1.42. dollars is $21.65. Number 9. Charles buys an item that is regularly priced at $330. There's a 20% off sales. He also has a coupon for 15% off. How much will the item cost? So first I take $330 minus, because that's off, and I find 20% of $330. Okay. $66. Okay, so I take 330 minus 66, and that's $264. Now there's another percent. So I, now I'm at 264. So now I take 264, and when you have a coupon for 15%, that means you get to subtract again. You want to subtract to prices, they make it cheaper. So 15% of 264. So again, I divide the percent by 100 and then times by 264. $39.60. $224.40. If you have point. Four, I need to see a zero, so that's 40 cents, and that's the end of the problem. Now, cross off number 10 and 11. I don't need you to know that. Okay. Number 12. Reconcile the bank statement with the checkbook balance. Okay. Cross that out. And we need to, I wrote this wrong, okay? This needs to say service charge. Okay, now there's me.
in my bank, okay? Now, my checkbook is me. I think I have $1,039.10, but my bank doesn't agree. The bank thinks I have nine eighty five. dollars Well, somebody's wrong, or maybe we're both wrong. Now, outstanding, okay? That's stuff my bank doesn't know about. So a check is subtracted. So I subtract 19.95 and I subtract 23. Checks come out of my bank account. 23.45 minus 30. Now a deposit means money comes into my account. So I add 125. Okay. Now, the service charge is 2.50. Now, that's me who doesn't know about the service charge, and that comes out of the account. So I subtract 2.50. Okay, so me, I just need that service charge adjustment. $1,036.60. Then my bank... They, now it's the same, okay? And I need to see that work shown so that we see that they're the same, okay? Then it's done. Okay, number 13. An original principal of $4,000 earns 3% simple interest over five years. Find the interest term. Now, the interest, simple interest, circle the word simple, and that means principal times rate times time. My principal is $4,000. Now, my rate is the percent, but that has to be divided by 100. Any percents will operation, so 0 0.03. And then your time is 5. So $600 is the interest, okay? Find the new balance. Well, I had $4,000 in my account to start with, and interest comes into the account. So I add $600, and $4,000 plus $600 is $4,600, and that's how much I have now. Now, the next one's an interest problem, but it's different. It's not simple interest. An original principal at $10,250 earns 4% interest compounded quarterly. Quarterly means four times a year, every time, over three years. Find the account's balance at the end of the period. Now, compound is different, okay? I multiply two, just two things. But the percent, and this is the money, has an exponent, okay? So I have $10,250. My percentage, I don't just divide 4 by 100. I have to take 100% and add the 4%. And that's 104%. Now I divide by 100. That's 1.04. Now the power, I take the quarterly, because that's four times a year, but there's three years, four times three. So I take four times three, that's 12. And now I multiply it. So 10,250 10, times 1.04 to the 12th power is $16,410.58. So you're going to need to study those, okay? Simple is principal times rate times time. 4,000 times 0. Point, you don't need 100%. You just divide that by 100 right there times 5, and that's your interest. Then the new balance. New balance means how much do I have? I had 4,000. I add 600. 
Now, compounded means it's more complex. There's two things multiplied, but the second factor has a power. Okay, Money, you got to add the 100 to 4, then divide it by 100, and then 4 times 3 is 12. There's 12 interest periods. Okay, now... Jack's last credit card statement was $339.40. However, he only paid $100. The interest rate on the unpaid balance is 17%. This month, he rung up $130 in new charges. Find Jack's current balance. Okay. Now, this is how much Jack was supposed to pay. That's how much he owed. He paid a hundred, so I can subtract a hundred, and that is two hundred thirty-nine dollars and forty cents. So now I'm done with these. Now, because he didn't pay all he was supposed to pay, he has an interest penalty, and he also runs up new charges. So there are two things we need to add. Now I know the second thing's a hundred and thirty. But this one I don't know. So it's 17% of something, and the set comes of the amount I didn't pay, the $239.40. So again, I take 17 divided by 100, and then times $239.40. cents. $40.70. So 239.40 plus 40.70 plus 130, $410.10. Okay, I don't need you to do this. Okay, so that's how we do credit cards. We take that minus our payment, and then I have two things to add. Okay, I don't need you to do in that one. Okay, number 17, Thomas borrows $45,000. He has 10 years to pay the loan. The APR is 12 and 1 fourth percent. Find his monthly payment. Now, APR we find on this table, okay? It's ratios, so I look up 12 and 1 fourth percent for 10 years. And that's $1.50. And it says per 100, so... It's over a hundred, and he has borrowed forty-five thousand dollars. Now I cross multiply and divide. So one point fifty times forty-five thousand divided by one hundred is six hundred seventy-five dollars, and that's how much he pays in a month. Now find his total repaid amount. Now he's paying this every month. Now, how many months are in a year? How many times do you have to pay that in a year? 12 times 12, and then he pays it for 10 years, so times 10. So 675 times 12 times 10, $81,000 he ends up repaying. Now, how much of that repaid amount, how much of this is interest? Because some of that is just him paying back the 45000 The difference means I minus between this, the repaid total, and the $45,000 is his interest. $36,000. Of interest. Okay, number 18. Jill negotiates a new car price with the dealer for $16,000. There's a 6% 6 sales tax and a fee for $125 for title and registration. She is able to trade her old car in for $3,500. Find how much she paid for the car. Now, the car costs 16000 but she gets, that old car gets subtracted, okay? Because I'm giving them my old car, I don't have to pay as much. It makes the price lower. So, 
So it says it costs 16,000, but if I'm trading my old car in, now I'm at 12,500. Now, you have to pay the tax, and you also have to pay another fee for the title. Remember, you add money amounts. These have, when you're adding, it has to be money amounts. So 125, I know. But the other one's a percent, 6%. So I have to find what 6% of 12,500 is. Okay, Because if I'm adding a percent, I have to find the percent of the number I'm adding. So I divide 6 by 100 times 12,500. And that's $750. $13,375. So when I get a number, I have to do something with all of it. Okay, cross out number 19. I'm going to take that one out. Okay. Actually, let's do 19, okay? When a car was purchased, it was worth $18,500. It loses value at a rate of 20. Actually, yeah, get rid of this one, okay? And get rid of that one, too, okay? Nothing wrong with those problems. I'm just shortening your concepts. You have to know a little bit. Okay, I definitely want this one done. You are at fault in an accident that involves one person in another vehicle. The other person's vehicle suffers $19,200 in medical expenses. Their vehicle incurs $12,500 of damage. Your own car has $2,500 of damage. Your insurance policy is 20 80 10 Now, you can cross out the 80 because there was only one other person, okay? One person. So... The 80 is if there's like more than one person in that other car that is hurt. That is. Okay, now comp and collision means it pays for my car. So first I worry about the other person. I write his, their, via, their medical expenses first. So 9,200. I write their vehicle next because it's all the other person we got to deal with first. And then my own car comes last. Now, $20,000, that's in thousands. Mm -hmm. Now, they'll pay a coverage limit of $20,000. Now, $20,000 is more than $9,200. So I don't need to minus. That's covered. Okay, I'm just going to write covered. Now, they'll pay up to $10,000 for their car. That's a coverage limit. So 12,500 minus 10,000 is 2,500. And then if I have comp and collision, my own car is covered, okay? So cuz that's not this one's not covered though, okay? This one's not covered cuz $10,000 is not more than 12,500, okay? Now, I have to pay this then. And I have to pay my deductible, which is $100. So I add these two, and it's $2,600 that I have to pay. Okay. Now you got some vocab. Okay, the math's done. These are your words. Deductible, policy, claim, premium, coverage, liability, comp, and collision. So it's a word bank. Any fault you have in someone else being injured is your liability. You have to kind of study these. The amount of money you must pay each year for the car insurance is premium. Benefits provided to you, your insurance company, in case of disaster. Benefits are called coverage. Okay. The contract you sign with your insurance agent is your policy. 
Insurance that pays for damage to your car if it is damaged is comp and collision. Because remember, my car was covered because I had comp and collision. Okay. The amount of money you pay in case of disaster before the insurance company will help you out, okay, is your deductible. Okay, because to have this, I had to pay that $100 deductible. Then asking your insurance company for payment in case of trouble is a claim, making a claim. 